right, this is the podcast for physical science, eighth grade, 2.4 heat and temperature. First up, we're going to talk about the kinetic theory of matter. Now, the kinetic theory of matter is stating that all particles that make up matter are constantly in motion. Remember, everything um, is made up of matter. And all of those mat um, particles are always moving. This is whether it's in a liquid, solid, or gas. Let's take a look at this picture here. This is about matter in motion. So as you can see here, a solid, the particles are held really tight together. Um, they're still in motion. They're still vibrating in there, but they're solid. They're not going to be moving anywhere. Um, in a liquid, like in the swimming pool, the particles are going to be further apart. They're going to have the ability to slide past one another. And this is why you're going to see, like in a liquid, they can actually um, slip and slide and move around in the vessel because it can actually take the shape of the vessel because of their, they've got that little bit more room in between the particles. And then in a gas, there's lots of space between them. They're free to move all over. Um, so there's lots of space, and um, they're not going to be stuck in one location. But... All of these, no matter whether they're liquid, solid, or gas, they're going to always be moving. Um, maybe they're not moving a whole lot, though. Temperature. This is the measure of average kinetic energy of all the particles in an object. So it's the measure of the average kinetic energy. If I have a cup of hot cocoa, it has a high temperature, which means that the particles in the liquid are moving very fast and have a high average kinetic energy. It's going to feel hot to the touch. In contrast, in this drink over here, it's a fruit smoothie. Um, so it's got an icy, sort of substance to it. So it's going to have a very low temperature. And so the liquid um, particles are moving very slowly. And so they're going to have a lower average kinetic energy. This is going to feel cold. Temperature is the measurement of the average kinetic energy of particles. It's not just their speed that this applies to. Um, it also depends upon their mass. If I were to have two different objects or two different things, and I had one is a metal doorknob and one is air, then the particles in the doorknob, there's more mass to that than there is to air. Um, so they can actually have a more kinetic energy than the particles of air. So you have the doorknob with the particles in it that are not moving. They don't have much speed because it's a solid, but it has more mass. Whereas in the air, you have lower mass, but they're moving at a faster speed. This results in the doorknob and the air being able to have equal temperatures. Now temperature, it can be measured using two different scales, both the Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale, and these are measured using a thermometer. All right, thermal expansion is the property that um, makes that liquid-filled thermometer work. Right, and it actually can affect many different substances. All gases, liquids, or many liquids, most solids expand when their temperature increases. Take a look at this picture here. This is the Gateway Arch in St. Louis, which is mostly built of steel. So therefore, as the heat radiates down from the sun, you're going to get an expansion because of the increased heat being applied to the vibrating particles inside it um, because they vibrate at a higher rate at higher temperatures. We use this same idea of thermal expansion when we're building something like a concrete bridge. What they do is they put together um, steel joints in order to apply the sections of the concrete bridge together. The reason they do this is because that thermal expansion is actually going to allow the, um, or it's going to cause the bridge to expand in the concrete. Um, and so those steel joints allow it to flex so that the bridge won't crack and break. All right, the next thing we're gonna talk about is actually describing and measuring heat. 
Now, when we think about heat and temperature, often we think that they're very clo um, they're the same thing. Well, they're not. They're closely related, but they're not the same thing. As we talked about, temperature is a measurement of the average kinetic energy of particles in an object. However, heat, it is the flow of energy from an object at a higher temperature to one with a lower temperature. One way to think of the difference between heat and temperature, if we add energy as heat to a pot of water, right, that temperature of the water is going to increase. It's going to increase the average kinetic energy of the water molecules and you'll see them start to boil. However, at one point you can no longer add any more heat and that's not going to change the temperature of the water anymore. And at that point it's going to change the physical state of the water from that liquid to a gas. This shows the difference between heat and temperature. Let's take a look at this picture here. This is a pitcher and a glass of lemonade. We've added some ice to it, right? Well, energy is going to be transferred from the warm lemonade that was originally there to the cold ice through heat until the cold ice and the lemonade are at an equal temperature. The lemonade's thermal energy is going to decrease. The ice's thermal energy is going to increase. At the same time that this is going on, the average kinetic energy of the particles in the lemonade are going to decrease um, so therefore the temperature of the lemonade is going to decrease. So let's see if we can summarize that. Let's move our picture over here. All right, so if we have, again, the lemonade, and over here we have the ice. The lemonade starts out warm, the ice starts out cold, the thermal energy, we'll just do E, of the lemonade is going to decrease. The thermal energy of the ice is going to increase. And because the lemonade has transferred some of its average kinetic energy to the ice, you're going to get a decrease in the average kinetic energy of the lemonade, which means the temperature is also going to decrease. One more thing about thermal energy, um, that temperature, remember, is an average, while thermal energy is actually a total. If I have a glass of lemonade and I have the entire Lake Mead, then what we're going to have is that the lake mead is going to have much higher thermal energy because it has many more water molecules. Okay, when we're measuring heat, we use the most common unit of heat measurement, which is the calorie, which is also sometimes called a joule. Here's the important part to remember. One calorie is the amount of energy needed to raise the temperature, to raise the temperature of one gram of H2O, water, by one degree Celsius. Specific heat applies to the idea that it is the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance, any substance, so raise it by one degree. Every substance has its own specific heat value. Each substance is going to absorb a different amount of energy in order to shame, show the same increase in temperature. Take a look at this chart. Here we show water, wood, aluminum, sand, glass, and iron, and their specific heats. Again, how much energy it takes to raise the temperature of one gram of that substance by one degree Celsius. This is their specific heat. Okay, so iron down here is one of the 
lowest amounts of energy needed, and water is one of the highest. In light of the fact that water, which is actually one of the substances with the highest specific heat value, um, in order for it to change its temperature, it's going to have to absorb a large amount of energy. On the same idea, in order for it to lose temperature, it's going to have to lose a large amount of energy. So again, objects of different temperatures come in contact with one another. In this case, right, so the average kinetic energy of the two objects are going to be different, right? One is going to be warmer, and so it's going to have greater kinetic energy than the particles of the cooler object. So when they come together and they collide, then some of that kinetic energy from that warmer object is going to transfer to the cooler object. So as long as they're in contact, that conduction is going to continue. There are three different types of materials that can actually work with this same theory. One of those is, are, or some of those are conductors and some of those are insulators. This is a example of a conductor. Here's an example of an insulator. And here is an example of both a conductor and an insulator because it has the insulating grip and the conducting pan surface. The next thing we're going to talk about is convection. In my classroom you've seen this in the lava lamp when the liquid moves from the bottom of the container to the top of the container and we've talked about this before, right? So you have the warmer, less dense air which is going to be pushed up by the cooler, denser air and as it cools, it becomes more dense and starts to sink. And the sinking air moves under the warm air, pushing it upward. So this is a big cycle, and this is called convection. And the last one is radiation. Radiation is energy that travels in electromagnetic waves. Um, these include visible light, microwaves, infrared. You don't need to remember those, just this is the way it works. The sun is our most significant source of radiation. Now, everything on Earth is going to feel that transfer of energy, um, which is going to increase the movement of particles on your skin, um, such as when the sun touches your skin, and you're going to detect it as an increase in temperature. That radiation increases the particle motion again that produces an increase in temperature. Now, when radiation is emitted from one object and absorbed by another, right, this is going to be the transfer of energy through heat. The one big difference between the way radiation um, works when it's transferring heat and compared to conduction and convection is that radiation actually can go through empty space. It moves from the sun to the earth um, and it can move throughout, but it doesn't radiate, um, or it, unlike conduction and convection, which have to be touching or moving with something. All right, our last section is on insulators. You guys just did a big project on this um, where you guys were testing different types of insulators and you found some are good insulators and some are not so good. Um, remember insulators, these are used to control and slow the transfer of energy from a warmer object to a cooler object because they're poor conductors of energy. 
Remember kind of the best way to remember an insulator? These are materials that keep cold things cold or they keep hot things hot. They work by trapping energy. If you take a look at this vacuum flask, right? You're gonna have a hot liquid on the inside. You're gonna have the air on the outside and it actually creates a empty space in between them because it allows that them not to be touching. Remember, we just talked about conduction and convection. They have to be touching to be able to transfer the energy. That empty space, which again, nothing but radiation can get through, is going to keep them from transferring that energy. Our sweet little polar bear here um, actually has a layer of air that gets trapped within the fur on its body. It has this special fur that allows the air to be trapped, which allows, again, that space to happen so that it won't get the cold from the environment that it lives in. And that's the end of the podcast review. Um, so as always, good luck on the test and happy studying.